text en catalán, more or less. Spanish, practically uh, all the words. And the presentation is going to be in English. But I have his uh, trajectory in, in Catalan translated. So it's the easier way for me to explain why we are here. So first of all, just one moment. It was open and I... First of all, Primera tot, first of all, I'm going to explain the wh why we are here. No? We are here because we are an association called Association AUC, Asociación Agrupación de Arquitectas Urbanistas de Cataluña, that we are interested um, in improving our profession as urban planners in Catalunya. So, um, una manera de millorar la nuestra profesión es mirar cap a fora, it's uh, seeing abroad what's going on. Y esta es la raó per la cual fem estas sessions de urbanismo comparat. ¿vale? Tot va començar gràcies doncs, a la Gapit Borràs que tenim aquí, que de cop i volta va dir, Rosina, estem, ya no fem viatges perquè hi ha una crisi galopant i fèiem un viatge a l'any i hem de trobar la manera de continuar enriquint-nos. Jo vaig dir, no et preocupis, Agapit, tinc la mitad dels meus amics vivint a l'extranger per la crisi, preguntaré los que se dedican al urbanismo o los que saben y no van venir gente y más gente y más gente a hacer sesiones de urbanismo comparado. Gracias, doncs, bueno, ya por ejemplo el Kevin Penalba que en aquel momento vivía a Bélgica va venir a explicar a Bélgica. Bueno, van venir de muchos países. Gracias a eso, we did a book. A book that it's urbanismo comparado that explains these several cases of urban planning in all around the world. And today, after pandemia, after uh, some years of, of not urbanismo comparado, today we start again, thanks to a travel that I did in Serbia. And Alex Ivancic uh, introduced me, Nina. And I was there and I was meeting Nina and I was thinking, why not we say uh, to Nina, come Barcelona and explain. Great, please, because I was really impressed about this uh, charming city, with this city with a lot of history, heritage. I think that the, this title, Embracing Change, Belgrade, bueno, Embracing Change between Heritage of the Past and Challenge of the Future, it's really a name that transmits this uh, experience when you are there. So, thanks, Nina. To, to come, and now I'm going to explain who is Nina. Who is Nina, the friend of Alex, and <laughs> some more. Just a moment, please. Nina is really friendly, really, uh, that you are really close to her, even if you don't meet her, and es va llicenciar i doctorar en urbanisme per l'escola. O sigui, el seu nom no és Nina, és Zaklina Gligorijevic. Gligorijevic, no? Gligorijevic. Es va llicenciar i doctorar en urbanisme per l'Escola d'Arquitectura de la Universitat de Belgrat i va cursar un programa de postgrau SPURS al MIT amb beca Humphrey. Va començar la seva carrera professional com a primera dona arquitecta al Centre de Planificació de Desenvolupament Urbà de Belgrat, del qual va arribar a ser directora el 2002. Ha treballat a l'oficina de l'arquitecte municipal, on va dirigir el Departament de Planificació General i Especial de l'Institut de Planificació Urbana de Belgrat i va ocupar el càrrec de directora entre el 2008 i el 2012. Directora general. Ha participat activament en diversos comitès de planificació urbana fins al 2013. També ha signat diversos concursos de disseny urbà, projectes, estudis i plans, entre ells el Pla General de Belgrat el 2009, l'Estratègia de Desenvolupament de la Ciutat de Belgrat el 2011 i 2016 i ha participat en el desenvolupament d'estratègies nacionals d'habitatge i arquitectura. Ha organitzat conferències nacionals i internacionals. I 
Exposicions i reunions amb les ciutats de Barcelona i Viena, 2009-2012, en el marc d'Isocarp, 2005-2014, i ha representat habitualment la ciutat de Belgrat i la professió urbanística en esdeveniments internacionals. Com a consultora urbana sènior, ha participat en grups regionals i nacionals amb el GBM, el grup del Banc Mundial, ONU Habitat, UNOPS i projectes de l'IPA, i és planificadora llicenciada actualment com a cap d'equip de projecte en part del programa Ciutats Verdes, Habitables i Resilients del grup del Banc Mundial a Sèrbia. So, as you understood, even if she's really close, she has a, she's really friendly, but she has a really deep knowledge and experience. So it's a great pleasure to have it here in, in this gorgeous uh, room with these views. And I think that we are going to enjoy these views and, and that views thanks to this visit. Thanks in, in behalf of, of Collegi d'Arquitectes. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, first of all, I want to thank Rosina and Carles for, for helping me coming here uh, in Barcelona, although I've, I've been here many, many times and I have already many friends. And uh, um, in, in the, in the uh, field of architecture, in the field of urban planning, and I'm really trying to uh, maintain this connect, nice connection with Barcelona for, uh, for now, I think 15 years was when, when we brought uh, Barcelona in Progress to Belgrade. And uh, <clears throat> we, are, we now, I'm speaking, we as a planning profession of Belgrade are trying to learn a lot from Barcelona, although it's not easy. And I, um, I, I think that we are still, when I, when I learned first time about planning Barcelona, I thought we are 20 years uh, uh, behind. Now maybe 50, <laughs> I'm not quite sure. But let's see, we will, you will show in my presentation. So um, first of all, uh, 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 before all the, of the, of the things Rosina told about me, I'm a city lover. And uh, cities are really uh, inspiring me a lot. And that is maybe why I cho choose um, urbanism, urban planning, and urban design instead of architecture. I'm, I was studying in architecture. And um, in general, I'm not repeating what you already know about cities and importance of cities and like very important role in, in, in um, economic development, not only of cities, but nations, states, and regions. So in fact, uh, I would like to introduce you because some of you don't know Belgrade and Serbia uh, and the situation. So um, Serbia was a part of former Yugoslavia. Now it's Serbia and it's not really uh, the part of the Eastern uh, bloc, not really uh, in the South. It's close to Central Europe. When you come there, you can see elements of all of them. Uh, it's uh, on Danube. We participate in all Danube. Uh, related projects, it's um, in transition. And it's a long, long lasting transition that is not yet finalized, unfortunately. And we'll speak about that later. I have a lot of slides. I'll try to speak in the mid, in the medium of, of in the middle of my lecture or, or presentation about important points about planning. And if we lack time for pictures, it's going to be okay because you will have the presentation. So I will try to compare a little bit Barcelona and Belgrade. Uh, uh, administrative territory, the huge metropolitan area, is, uh, uh, consists of 17 municipalities, and it's uh, uh, 320, let's say, 5,000 uh, hectares, and population is 1.6 million. It was less than it was projected in the 70s. Very interesting. So city area, the, the, the city of Belgrade, the, the urban area is only 70 hectares and population is 1.3 million. Uh, it's a very old settlement. It's, uh, I'm, I'm in, I mean, it's, it's rather not very nice to say. It's on crossroads and all the cultures melt in this city, but in fact, that's true. And um, it's a 
biggest city in Serbia. It's a capital city, but the smallest region. The city has a status of region as well. Uh, it has two rivers, lies on the River Sava and River Danube, which are all in, um, international rivers. We are trying to use that opportunity for cooperation. Uh, it hosts 25% of Serbian population. It uh, contributes with 35% to Serbian GDP, and 29% of Serbian employees are working in Belgrade. So it's really uh, taking all the resources from Serbia. Uh, 42% of Belgrade employees are highly educated, and uh, Serbian admin, it, it's a center, of, <clears throat> of course, but uh, comparing to other cities and marketing of cities, it's not going to be the common, global, uh, fast-growing capital city, when we will see why. So this is population trend is, is in Belgrade. Uh, Belgrade is not formally losing population, but the trajectories are really not nice. And then we are, we are getting more um, migration than the natural growth. Uh, so um, uh, who is interested, that, that will be in the, in the materials, in the presentation. But in fact, comparing to 6.5 million of state population, Belgrade population is 1.6, 1.7. Rosina told me to, to, to show just a little bit about Serbia to get an impression. And my knowledge of Serbian cities is coming from my actual project. I'm communicating with, that, uh, with 10 mid side cities in Serbia, Belgrade not included. And all 10 cities are losing population. When we compare numbers, they lost a little bit of population within the uh, last 10 years, except two of them. One is very good north position center of Novi Sad, which is growing slightly. And the second is um, the southern, um, uh, close to Bosnia city, which is, uh, well, developing more population because people are coming from other regions. Uh, in general, cities are uh, also emptying the territory of Serbia. So villages are losing population. Small cities are moving to Belgrade. Belgrade population is moving abroad. So it's kind of an interesting moment, and we have a lot of migrants now. We will see, and we got a lot of refugees from the civil war. So let's see what's going on, what's going to happen in future. Uh, speaking about infrastructure and and let's say facilities, um, in general, uh, Serbian cities and municipalities are lacking. Uh, contemporary infrastructure, so they are trying to catch up somehow with European projects, etc. But in fact, cities, main cities and mid-sized mid cities are uh, actually moving forward uh, all the other parts of Serbia. This graph is from my act actual project. It lists all the mandatory documents that, that all local cell governments, including cities, are obliged to provide in, and all the policy documents that are recommended to cities to catch up with new strategies, European strategies, green agenda, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is a lot, and having in mind that uh, the, the cities are losing population and losing professionals, this is really a huge homework for them, and therefore they really need some kind of support. Um, now I'm focusing only on one particular detail in my project, and this is how cities in Serbia are planning their development, sp spatial development. So comparing these 10 cities, all of them are projecting that their, their building territory is going to be uh, much higher. And uh, it, it is interesting, we were wondering why, because they are losing population, they are not economically growing. Why are they planning a more territory for constructions? And well, there are two possible answers. Uh, one would be uh, because Serbia has a lot of illegal constructions, illegal uh, settlements, and planners are trying to find the good way to legalize these constructions and settlements and to uh, embed them into a city area. The second one would be that usually 
cities are expecting economic development from the uh, foreign investment, and they then uh, <clears throat> plan um, and build territories for the new investments and new economic zones, new industries, etc. So usually these zones are remaining half empty, but this is only condition that you can attract investors from elsewhere to come and invest in development. Uh, I'm going back to Belgrade because it, it's my my aim was to, comp to to understand or to show how Belgrade what is, what are the Belgrade challenges so you can understand comparing to Barcelona maybe um, Belgrade uh, is very old settlement as I told and uh, it's sometimes I try to compare uh, how our planners doing in different cities so uh, we find some plans from I don't know, 18th century would be for sure, and 19th century as well. But what I was interested in was uh, planning tradition in um, planning tradition in 20th century. And that was my PhD thesis about, because I was working in planning since, let's say, end of 80s. This was the moment when the end of, of the progress of Belgrade and Yugoslavia just happened and then economy started to decline so in this is a, a sketch from our colleagues from town planning institute about the development of belgrade until 72 that was one of the main um, uh, master plans of belgrade and it's interesting we we should maybe make some other steps to see what's going on but you will see on the map uh, so we uh, city lovers are trying to make poetry of planning, and then key elements of Belgrade urban ident identity is a the position, good position in crossroads and two European rivers. But what in time when we couldn't do um, a lot on marketing because Belgrade was recognized once in 80s uh, of the last century from a movie the director as perfect location to make a movie because you can tell it is a European city, but you cannot recognize which one precisely because it has elements of Turkish, um, 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 Austro-Hungarian, I don't know, different uh, cultures. And that is one story that, that moved us to think about what should be the uh, identity that we should speak. Spur, sorry. And uh, the other interesting moment about identity is that we had a, uh, Aravena recently teaching in Novi Sad for one night uh, about generally architecture, but mostly about social housing. And somebody asked him, what do you think about Belgrade? He was there for a few hours, maybe. And he said, well, uh, from what I've seen, it has good balance between the structure, because it's partly very well structured, in orthogonal structure, but it has that um, element of, of, uh, of not structured at all. And if you compare that to Latin American cities, you cannot live there, but it is just the right balance between the two. So you are excited, it's interesting, it's not boring, but it's really a little bit structured. So. Uh, my 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 first idea about how to promote Belgrade and its identity was urban structures, urban cores of Belgrade. We made a, a study for the some kind of fair in Madrid long time ago, 15 years ago, and my colleague and I in Town Planning Institute prepared a, a kind of material promoting three urban cores of Belgrade: uh, Old City of Belgrade, around the City Fortress historic city of Zemun with the Millennium Tower and the central New Belgrade, which is kind of uh, recognized from a global uh, architecture society as a living example of so-called Le Corbusier city living today as well. So Belgrade Fortress, I will leave some links. It's very interesting. So many layers, so many historical trails. Uh, which was and the city which was uh, built around it, uh, the city of Belgrade uh, uh, facing Sava is much more 19th century European, uh, Central European type, uh, while the city 
uh, facing Danube uh, um, um, exist since the Turkish times, but it's really kind of a, a different structure than the one uh, on, on facing Sava. Um, 18th and 19th centuries left very nice uh, um, pieces in Belgrade to recognize, but what we are proud of, and I recognized yesterday when I was visiting uh, the, the building uh, of, um, of Rosina and uh, her, her husband, I felt somehow very related to this architecture because New Belgrade is really something not similar, I may say the same, uh, and uh, we try really to promote New, New Belgrade was the reason why while um, architects from um, MoMA made an exhibition about um, concrete utopia in Yugoslavia, and maybe you have heard, uh, I thought maybe to bring a catalog because it's really saying a lot, but it was too heavy. <laughs> so uh, these are the, the, the sketches from the city and photos from the, from the urban parts. The natural core of the city is something that we appreciate a lot. And we are kind of, uh, excuse me, so saying this, afraid that some, someday someone will get an idea to construct something in this very heart of Belgrade because it is really green. It's a national natural monument. Uh, and uh, we are trying to kind of um, protect it by putting it in our identity list. So the three urban uh, cores are arranged around this uh, natural core. So uh, I will just go back to the planning part. Uh, City of Belgrade made the first plan after the Second World War to host uh, the new state of Yugoslavia. And uh, it was really kind of strict plan with, uh, with intention to have like New Belgrade was only a marshy land and uh, architects and theoreticians uh, planned to make a new city there to host all the people coming to construct Belgrade. Uh, but since uh, that was the first optimistic idea, even in 70s, they changed an idea uh, after education of a lot of specialists somewhere abroad. And they made uh, the uh, new plan of Belgrade in the 70s. Uh, the economy was, let's say, growing. And they, their motto was archipelago of settlements in the Sea of Green. It was even more poetic. Uh, but what they uh, promoted was participation, what was really um, interesting for that time, and perception of socialism, which is kind of strict. Uh, management. Uh, so many people uh, participated in decision making, um, uh, integrated urban design, sensitive to heritage, and uh, accessible public sp spaces. When we watched the movies promoting that plan, it is unbelievable how they were aware of qualities of the city. But, um, well, We'll see. So Belgrade was always um, uh, related to, to public transportation. In 2017, 47% uh, uh, was overall share of day travels in public transportation in Belgrade. But the number is not as good as it looks like because uh, so many people do not have individual cars, so they have to take public transportation. But you will see that in fact, there is a lot of individual cars in Belgrade still. Uh, first plans of Metro came from the um, 60s, uh, based on the uh, plan in 1950. And the next one came in, uh, based on, on the next plan in 76. This is the one in 2021. We still don't have Metro. So it's interesting how planners are optimistic and uh, what's going what is happening in, 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 in reality. So this is about, um, this is not so recent photo, but the, 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 the situation didn't change. Who is interested in, in transportation data, they can, you can see. So while speaking about sustainability, I'm, I'm focusing only in traditional versus strategic planning, because I speak about things that I experienced and everything else is much more known. 
uh, we used the opportunity to celebrate 70 years of institution that was dealing with planning Belgrade, which is Town Planning Institute. I, I thought in one second that it is something similar to Barcelona Regional, but maybe this is much more, this institute was maybe a little bit more related to city government. So even today, in this institute, uh, <clears throat> our colleagues, my colleagues, are uh, specialized in regional general urban planning and uh, a lot of analysis, but usually very close to what government, city government and state government are willing to hear and read. So we use that 70 years. That is, this is how I, I learned about the history of planning because I felt a little bit frustrated because the expectations from the city government in these recent times are really, for us planners, kind of um, uh, confusing and challenging. So we, we did a history of planning and we hope at least that whoever is going to come to plan Belgrade is going to read what we found and then to negotiate with governments and economy. So we went to MoMA, we, we brought that plan to New York, to MoMA, and then uh, let's go to see the visions of our planners. So we spoke about master plan of Belgrade in the 50s. We found, for example, that our colleagues in the 70s said that thesis on uh, in thesis on, on improvement of the Belgrade development, they said that urban planning goals must be higher than just practical because usually urban governments are expecting only results so they can implement uh, designs or investments in, in that plan. So planners were always more uh, kind of, um, um, let's say, took more responsibility than it was really respect, expected. So we had interesting history of master plans, but what happened in the uh, 80s, uh, the economy declined, uh, the, the um, planning was kind of uh, not efficient, uh, not sufficient for the interesting uh, political and economic situation. And uh, in, in general, the state faced crisis and the city state uh, faced crisis. So um, the change of general plan just lowered the expectations. And then we changed the general plan because it could not be implemented. And the next one in, it was in 2003 after the uh, political changes in Belgrade. So I will just go back for a second, which is if you compare master plans, which are strategic plans, these drawings are so kind of uh, the, 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 the land use is so small, so politicians expected from planners to give instant answer to the question, where can I construct? So we lost that strategic character of the plan, and we, we actually did a physical plan, uh, 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 calling it uh, still master plan. So why am I so persistent with transi transition? Transition happened... Uh, in uh, late 80s with, with collapse of the Eastern Bloc and all the Eastern um, European countries passed that transition uh, more quickly or more slowly. And uh, Serbia somehow was stuck in that where we are going to go, what are we going to do, what is going to be the system that we are going to embrace. We got a civil war, so that transition lasts even today. You will see why. Uh, so that when you are professional in such such kind of uh, environment, then you have to understand that there are different forces that are shaping cities, and our school of architecture is not giving enough um, uh, basis for planning that is going to be uh, efficient. And the second thing is that city administration should maybe accept the new role of planning in managing cities because negotiations were not really um, a, a typical uh, relation between the governments and planners. And then what we found out with planners now, uh, we could only be innovative and persistent in attempt to make planning better. So in fact, decision-making is somewhere else. So what we as, as, as kids in school and later as young architects and planners, that our plan be implemented such 
as such, but we now face three challenges in reality. So I will just refer to one more, oh, and I said already about informal destruction. There is an excellent book, it was made by Eteha Basel Studio. Uh, it was made in, let's say, 2007, something like that. And they came, uh, they are, uh, let's say, un trying to understand differences. Belgrade was just one of them because one of their colleagues was coming to Belgrade. And they made the beautiful book about formal, or unstable, well, very stable, informal. But it's giving how what what planners are very important that we start by but nowadays this legalized. Enable provide structure. So there are a few examples in uh, the the lower picture is in the very part. So nine for the worst part. Uh, I don't know. Would not make any comment. Then how they there and will do the other try to inform that I'm sorry that I don't understand much because it's a short about uh, life of my partners. And now one very true is changed. White buildings are building building time changes so since Now, this building doesn't belong. They have to be out. This is only part capable of. No one talks about that. Planning is not easy, although it's uh, true. But what I found Spanish in this experience, I learned not to And it's the same situation. Uh, I was offering to know that I tried to understand my plan. 
getting to obviously so complicated. Why is so demanding? Why governments are expected? Why? I found out that it's not that the change is made by Serbia, but countries change their laws. Uh, so I already told you what the challenge dealt with. Uh, I used also a knowledge you we will learn about global and in planning Belfast we are discussing very there is so so social environmental uh, issue and uh, this is the title of the presentation but it's also marking our city and our our session so um this is the picture of the plan uh so uh Plan two, uh, and it is not the zone. So what happened in fact is that uh, we were expecting to extend that foreign investment in Level on the maximum, but in fact, all the best. So let's 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 talk about for the ideas in this project. Um, there were so many ideas about uh, bringing the river. It's always. Uh, the first big project is met was a common project uh, they tried to get her uh propose they came to their face if they were invited by tribe they grant That was a so uh uh our uh we are not good architects, we need Well, all one issue, and then we just have this project master plan that happened. Uh, this photo is telling you about the uh, relation of Belgrade citizens to public space, especially to green spaces. Belgrade has a lot of green spaces, using it a lot uh, in botanical garden, event, uh, restaurant. Uh, uh, recreation, whatever. So there is a notion of green space this, that should be respected in any way in uh, constructing new uh, ideas in Belgrade. So I will skip that um, uh, details about uh, how we implement uh, as, as planners the master plan. And we'll go back to the huge project because that was the decision in one moment. Let's go. Let's try to move to strategic plans uh, uh, in, in, in ch for a change of master to traditional master and physical plans. So this territory of Belgrade is 
is slowly filling with colors, which means that wherever is empty space, someone has an idea to construct something. Uh, these are huge projects like big projects of City of Belgrade. Uh, I will list some of them. The, the main one is Belgrade on the Water. Uh, planners and city governments were keeping this space close to the River Sava, where there were rail tracks and a rail station for decades, not because they thought they are not capable of filling it with, with square meters, but because it was so important and they just uh, uh, tried to um, keep that space for a public purposes, for, 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 for green space, and then if needed, something which is really public amenities. Uh, in that, uh, it was so complicated that not even mayors and neither planners, we, we had several design competition. One was in the 90s, it was international competition. There were a lot of ideas how to arrange this, but politics, is uh, uh, stronger, and in a promotional campaign, uh, we got in 2012, I think, we got the, the, the proposal uh, by the political party that, that was entering the uh, elections of such kind of development. And we thought, it's not going to happen. So in 2014, we got master plan from Eagle Hills. It's a company from Dubai. And then uh, we also thought it's not going to happen because the things were not happening really so quickly. Uh, these are the details. The whole area on the river, uh, river bank, the, the rail, rail station was moved, the rail tracks were moved. And today we have uh, uh, implemented uh, master plan. And the, the tower is also constructed. Uh, a lot of Commercial housing is there instead of uh, green spaces, etc. Uh, people who are not architects are maybe appreciating because uh, the development, because there is a lot of public space which is nicely arranged, safe, good for walking and riding bicycles. Some of my colleagues uh, don't want to put a foot in that area because they are insulted of, with this. Uh, uh, development and this is this is partly why I choose to uh, to uh, study uh, and to try to face the change because it's inevitable and we have to find a way how to somehow embrace that change how to find how to uh, make uh, uh, an, a party for negotiations in in this kind of situations so public space is really nice. Uh, uh, this is the square on the left, the square in front of the former uh, rail station. We got the monument. Now you can see the, the let's say, aesthetics. We, on, the un, on the one hand, we, we got some kind of aesthetics, which is not really close to, to our sensibility. On the other hand, you see the tower in construction, now finalized. Uh, and the uh, evening view would be this. And this is not something that belongs to Belgrade, really, uh, according to my view. And this is a real estate uh, situation in Belgrade. They promote a lot of, lot of, lot of apartments in this area. Uh, I will go back to the um, um, uh, city on the water projects of, of, of Libeskind and, and uh, and Yangel, you can see a little bit of green there, a little bit of uh, public space, a lot of, uh, there were, now we are wiser than before, now we see what we lost, because there are so many public amenities there, their culture, renovations of industrial heritage, etc. cetera. Uh, this, this is the, the design which is coming nowadays after, after this type of constructions. Um, a lot of green space and empty spaces are, are promoted to be constructed, especially when they are state-owned. Uh, the metro station is proposed here in this development, which not even started. Uh, then we started to learn about transportation nodes. Um, uh, there is a new construction of new railway station, new Belgrade. The other day was opened the new sta station um, 
on the other side, in the old, in the old part of Belgrade, we are trying to accommodate new uh, uh, agendas. We, we had uh, Belgrade is interesting city and this position is very nice, but even in 2006, we had floods. And it's not easy just to, um, just to forget about this, uh, what, what, was, what happened that day. It was amusing for, for a few days, but in 2014, uh, the whole city of Obrenovac, which is a part of Belgrade, was flooded and it became too serious. And in that sense, uh, Belgrade is participating in um, resilient cities. Uh, we got uh, support from uh, World Bank and other organizations in understanding risks, etc. We did the studies on climate change. But in fact, uh, having all that in mind, assuming uh, that uh, cities are resilient, which they are not really, uh, uh, Rickwood said that we, citizens, administration, architects, planners, must do something to clearly state our priorities because we are the only ones to blame if things go wrong. So it's a, I just recognize myself in this book. And uh, I will just uh, very quickly pass to new projects. We tried to, as planners, uh, we have the responsibility because sometimes we can really do something like communication, uh, learning from Barcelona, learning from Vienna, learning from uh, consultants, uh, uh, trying to uh, save that uh, resources and beautiful course of Belgrade. Uh, and let's see that uh, this was one competition and our colleagues, young architects, really saw that natural core as something that should be kept. And I really hope it's going to stay there. We do some cycling paths. Uh, and recently, in the, in the line where well, rail tracks all around the old city of Belgrade, we are going to get a linear park inspired by the high, high Line in New York or some linear park in Moscow. I haven't seen it, but I've heard that there is one. So this was the inspiration for our colleagues. And for the, for the speaking about identity, I'm going to just uh, run over all the uh, activities that we are doing, but they are still uh, historic and industrial heritage in these areas that, that we are using on, in a way that, for, from my perspective, are kind of acceptable instead of just moving everything and making it uh, new developments. This is all fair ground. It, it's there from 1938. Uh, some of the building as, buildings are still there. Uh, these are also storages. We had an international competition for this storage. In a, it, it's a line underlying the Belgrade fortress. Uh, we had very nice jury, uh, even from Barcelona and from Vienna and from Brazil. Uh, it was really super uh, competition. Soy Fujimoto won the first prize, uh, but the government didn't like it. So, uh, at the end of the day, now we have a proposal nowadays for the construction of one of the first buildings in, Bel in New Belgrade. And the proposal is to, it is Hotel Yugoslavia, it was one of the first New Belgrade buildings. And nowadays, uh, the proposal is to be uh, more than 50% housing, and then hotel and some commercial activities, etc. So having structures and inspirations, there is another interesting thing. We have a structure in the Belgrade Fair. It was one of the, of the biggest um, uh, uh, structures, halls uh, in, in, in the world in that, in that uh, time. And it's also going to be uh, uh, deconstructed, <laughs> demolished. Uh, because Belgrade on the water is spreading along the Sava River, and we uh, citizens and we professionals are kind of confused and not really powerful there. So I went to see uh, the website of the... I've heard that there's going to be an expo in 2027 in Belgrade, so I went there to see, 
and the promotion is very nice. I could be a part of the team to promote because the, the values are sport, music, uh, open uh, playing, etc. Creativity is the word. But look at what is going to happen there. So it's a Spanish design. Uh, hectares of, of constructions. They say it would be uh, it would be constructed until 2027. So I, I have chosen to, to borrow the expression of um, Enrique Peñalosa, who was a mayor. He was not a, a planner. But what I liked about his governance was that he really went to the, to the ground. He spoke with, with people and uh, introduced uh, public transportation and cycling in Bogota. And uh, I also recognized or my attitudes in, in uh, what is about, what are the good cities. Uh, it's about our life and happiness. There are no right and wrong answers. And we have an intuition there can be radically different and better ways to achieve those cities. So uh, with, with that, I would like to close my presentation. I'm sorry I was too long, but well, I hope we'll, we'll get some discussion on what you have seen. Thank you so much. So much, Nina. It's really interesting to see that <coughs> Majima just the effort to, to make this presentation with uh, a lot of intensity. Thank you. Now uh, we can start the discussion in Spanish is good in English as well. In Catalan, not that well. I can translate Catalan to English. Um, so let's. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, English maybe. I'm, I'm from Belgrade, so I'm not really, uh, <laughs> but, but I, uh, thank you for the presentation. That was great. I've, I've, I've studied architecture in Belgrade in the 90s, so I kind of <laughs> also studied and lived what you explained and also have been suffering all the consequences that are until nowadays. So my question is very concrete. So uh, it's obviously impossible to do anything, apparently. No, it's just uh, okay. It's like uh, top-down decisions that kind of sweep away all kinds of, you know, planning, studies, and so on. So I was talking with my friends last summer, or this summer in Belgrade, which are a collective of architects who have done a lot of research. We brought projects from Barcelona there. We are planning also to bring something here. And also Ministry of Space. So, so there's a lot of activism in Belgrade against all these things that are going on. No. So what are your thoughts about it? How is Planning Institute uh, collaborating with the activists? What are the you know kind of professional institutions doing? Because obviously the this type of mobilization and activism is the only thing that maybe can stop a little bit what's going on. No, because it's drastic. It's dramatic. No. So that's my question. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Uh, I maybe I forgot to say that I left Town Planning Institute five years ago. Uh, <laughs> my last job there was uh, studying history of planning. That was my privilege. I I got that job. I was the former director, still working in the institute, and it was not very pleasant. I got the the task was arrange the website and do the jubilee. So as a PhD. With 30 years of planning experience, I said, thank you. I used the opportunity and I made that Jubilee a one and a half year long project with MoMA exhibition. So I, I felt that it was the best part I could do for planning in that institution. Uh, after uh, I left it, for it, uh, it, was, it was just an opportunity. And uh, as I came from the private sector to planning institute, and I was educated in a different way with a lot of participation. Our first step in any planning was to go to the neighborhood 
to the city, to all stakeholders to speak about them, to have open doors before the concept of the plan. I thought that I'm going to change, uh, excuse my, uh, uh, my, my attitude, but I thought that I can contribute to, to betterness of planning institution of Belgrade. So I did my best. So we did a lot of what you have seen was, uh, was the efforts that we made. Uh, nowadays, it's really uh, complicated to be polite. Uh, I uh, I have an I have an, an impression that the 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 perception of development is totally different in the city government and in the in the city, which is absurd. But to the level that is there is no communication. Uh, there are a lot of people working. There is a lot of architects uh, who left. Uh, institutions. They are organized elsewhere in the civic sector, and that's okay. They can work, argue, fight for the, I mean, better way of planning, decision making, etc. Uh, but, well, since I'm getting information from the websites, it can tell you that <laughs> communication is not really good, and I have no idea how it's going to be changed. And I'm kind of frightened because. Well, all of our knowledge, uh, this is why I adore Barcelona model. It, it's not just like black and white. I understand that it's, sometimes it's complicated. You, you, you try to understand uh, like neighborhoods to be socially uh, responsible, but there are forces that are shaping our cities that are not so simple. And uh, I think I always had trust in education. and. Uh, the changes are so fast, and the only hope of mine is education. Politicians, uh, investors. We are establishing now. There is a there is a exhibition of architecture which is annual, and it has a good a long tradition. We just recently decided to, as I'm active in association, uh, we decided to um, to establish an award for the for the good investors. So. Who is going to try to find compromises with the intentions of the like good urbanism or architecture and his profit from the from the project? So um, uh, when you ask our city government, they say, "Well, we are doing our best." You you have something against Expo? You don't like development? This is the first uh, um, uh, answer. It seems that you have something against. The development of the city. So excuse me for being funny, but uh, it's very it's very complicated. Maybe we had the pleasure, Jauma and Alex and I. We we were uh, working in that cooperation between cities in times when 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 it was easier. There 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 was kind of perception of let's tr learn something from others who are better, who are maybe and I. I'm just, it's good that I have a different kind of job now, so I'm not so frustrated. Um, two, two questions. The first, in the north of Europe, there there is uh, some uh, there are some municipalities where the town hall has the thirty percent, forty percent of the the household flats uh, dwellings of the municipality, and that allows that the young people uh, can buy can rent in the in the same city. And now in Barcelona is absolutely the, the contrary. A lot of uh, young people needs to to go to another to another town to another municipality because uh, the city is is a great business for the for the capitalism. Uh, what what happens with that problem in Belgrade? And the second question is uh, that uh, the territory is a system, is not. Uh, 
an addition of isolated municipalities. Uh, and now uh, in Catalonia and in Spain, we, uh, because the dictatorship of Franco gets uh, uh, so uh, very, very power to the municipalities, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to, to plan uh, uh, some project intermunicipal. And this is, 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 uh, is, uh, is, is not the way because uh, the territory is a system. What happens uh, in Belgrade? Thank you. Much for the question. Uh, I, I expected the question about uh, supporting young people and other people in housing in cities. Uh, in general, we uh, as, as, as a state uh, lost that um, activity with uh, privatization of, of housing uh, which previously belonged to, uh, to the state. Uh, it were that there were two uh, attempts in two periods in uh, 90s and in 2004, I think. The state decided to change the politic, housing policy and to try to help young people, educated people, people from the, who are working within the uh, public sector to somehow achieve housing under certain conditions. And the uh, city of Belgrade, usually it was given, the, the right was given to the cities to somehow organize either like agency that is uh, finding the location and supporting uh, that housing or the state depending on the ownership of the land. And it worked for some time. But it seems that recently, uh, I haven't heard about such a policy. Uh, the state is only dealing with, with urgent, uh, problematic people who have no chance to get any housing. So it's, it's kind of a social, uh, social um, uh, support. And uh, um, in fact, municipalities, cities, uh, usually don't have any more um, ownership. They lost the ownership in transition, in economic transition to gain any money, they sold the ownership to our actual tenants. There is no also policy for new developments, which would be, uh, uh, I participated in one, one uh, national housing strategy, and we tried to propose the policy that all new developments uh, are obliged to provide some capacities for, for, for social housing in a, in a very broad uh, sense of word, which is like for some support, uh, financial for 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 different kinds of social housing, but we still don't have it. We just have the the, the law on social housing, and in Serbia, social housing means support to very vulnerable vulnerable uh, families not capable to to get housing. So I think there is a lot of space for improvement, as as our colleague from Belgrade said, and there is a lot of uh, lessons to learn. From Barcelona, for example, as as far as I know, I didn't know that it was it was becoming problematic in Barcelona. Uh, the second question was intermunicipal planning. Well, we learned about that because uh, Belgrade has 17 municipalities. That uh, 10 of them are the city of Belgrade, but we have seven more small cities within the metropolitan area. Uh, for now, the planning law is is, a pre, is 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 mandating local authorities, local self governments are our uh, administrative units, to plan within their boundaries. If we want to plan the infrastructure corridor between one city and region Belgrade and the next city, which is 60 kilometers from Belgrade, and it is some uh, rail track or some some highway or something like that then the responsibility is on the, on the state government. So the same principle was used in planning Belgrade on the water. If cities are asked, it wouldn't be like that. And then it's transferred to the national government, and then national government is 
is a, a labeling that project of national interest or inter intercity interest, and then planning goes to the higher levels. So in that sense, we have we have awareness that we have to plan together and to be uh, complementary. But depending on the case, if 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 there is communication within municipalities, okay. If not. <laughs> There is always someone above who is uh, who is planning. Thank you so much. Very, very nice question. Thank you, Vina, Nina, for for this uh, excellent overview of of the city and and the planning after your experience so so many years. Um, uh, I guess that uh, it's not about black and white, as you said, right and wrong. Um, you are repeating on how to uh, to learn from Barcelona, but for sure um, there are some common challenges and, and, and frustrating experiences as well. Um, our city, as our, our in our waterfront, we are accumulating certain uh, frustrations, and pro and you are showing us at the moment, you not know, some ongoing plans. Uh, uh, Precisely for for uh, aligning for changing the scope of of the of, of the the river bank transformation. Um, for sure, I mean I, I'd say that uh, we had the pleasure to to have a glimpse, a very quick glimpse of the city with you, and and as a foreigner, I would say that uh, it is extremely. I mean I would say that it's an an ex extremely uh, attractive city. Uh, because it is very, I'm, I'm not sure that I would be, I would agree with Aravena. I, I would say that the, it is a, a very well established city because of the urban fabric, but of course for the territorial, uh, no, um, I mean, the, the, the territorial condition and geographical situation that is quite exceptional and this make very strong the, 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 seat, the city sense. Uh, my, one of, our curiosity when visiting the city as well is okay, and you, you're showing more and more plans of the development of these um, uh, strategic points in the in the river banks. Uh, but we have seen that that the city is not growing; there is a kind of decline in terms of population. You are not in well; everybody is in the global market, but it's not in so prominent place. And we are seeing some features that are quite common from so many emerging cities in the world. So what is the reality there? I mean, what, what is the target of, of, of these urban developments? Because it, they are not planning urban uh, I, um, social housing, of course. We did not, we did not in, in our waterfront, neither. But uh, maybe if it's not for foreign investors, that means Chinese wall, Russian, or maybe it's Russian. So it, it is a bit paradoxical. As when you see the, the size of these urban developments in a city that is not growing, uh, it's a bit tricky, no? Just to, to understand that. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Well, I, I had the same question for people who are selling uh, properties in Belgrade. So I couldn't understand, since I'm a researcher and, and I found out that the city is not growing in, in, in terms of population. And uh, it's not growing in terms of economy. Uh, and the only, the only, um, the only um, idea that is always forced is development, 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 and development. And we use our resources a lot, a lot of free space, a lot of green space, a lot of uh, uh, historic heritage, et cetera, et cetera. And they are all endangered with a lot of uh, development. And this is somehow a thing that I cannot understand. So I, I tried to go and knock on the door of real, develop, real estate developers pretending I'm buying, I'm trying to find the apartment. And I was very sweet. And I asked too many questions, like, who is buying these properties? 
why are they so so uh, can you imagine that the 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 we are we are uh, we are calculating per square meter not per apartment and the price for for the square meter of a, of a new construction in not very special part of belgrade is 5000 euros which was not to dream about a few years ago so something had happened and it's not related to belgrade something really had happened in the global market and then we we got a lot of of of, uh, of uh, apartments in belgrade on the water uh, uh there are developments all over the city so for some reason our government is letting people construct no matter what who is gaining who is earning the money in that game that is my big question who is going to be rich after that because there is so much money where that money comes from because a we got a lot of uh, people coming from i don't know ukraine and russia and they're they're I can understand that they're they're running away from the conflict area. Belgrade is not such an expensive city. They are coming there. They are they are renting apart. Rent have rose have risen extremely, and people are 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 really buying apartments to rent. But there is not there is not enough people who are going to 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 take these apartments. What is going to happen when the the conflict is gone? And then who is going to use these uh, these apartments that you have seen in in pictures because they are only in plans. So my idea is that there must be some kind of um, how how should I say that um, um, <laughs> I don't know even in Serbian but it it's some game with money and properties that is not related to Belgrade and. Uh, I'm always asking uh, uh, the, the the person who I asked. She said, "Well, a person from Singapore bought two apartments. Why, for the heaven's sake, if someone from Singapore who doesn't know where Belgrade is would buy two apartments in Belgrade? I I have no idea, except if that's some kind of interest. So, uh, so I I didn't answer your question because I don't know as well." At the end of the day, uh, don't you think it's a kind of pyramidal system? I mean, uh, somebody is earning, earning, they are winners, but the last one is going to lose everything because the, actually there is no market. I mean, there is no people to occupy this. this uh, and we can talk about Ukraine and, and Russia. Uh, how many Russians uh, came to Belgrade? 10,000? What is, what is 100,000? What is that in, 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 in the city of. Uh, uh, 1.6 million. I mean, it's it's still uh, not not the, the question because w when you see, I mean, uh, there is a, this nice waterfront. There is huge development on the other uh, river bank. I mean, this future uh, expo. Okay, this is something relatively in the center or or interesting part of the city. But when you go to, I mean, to this other, I don't know, uh, it was in uh, in Makish, yeah. I mean, uh, what what are you? I mean, uh, we, actually, we we did from Barcelona here, the urban planning project there, master plan for a neighborhood far away, and it never happened. So somebody is like preparing uh, projects for banking, expecting that somebody else is going to invest, expecting that somebody else is going to buy. But at the end of the, at the, end of the day, if it happens, the last one is going to lose everything because. Uh, plus this this I, I mean I don't know if you uh, if you agree but I believe this is very low quality construction actually I mean uh, if you if you look at the materials they're this fancy cheap plastic uh, facades which is going to be nice when you buy it but in three four years ten years it's going to be worse than what you are seeing now from 50s which is still remaining very very well because it's it's solid wood material. So I don't know what's your what's your opinion. Do, do, do you agree that this kind of, of, of it's like, not uh, because you are my friend, but I agree totally with you 
because uh, I can see similar situation in, in various cities in the region. I've heard that Barcelona is also producing a lot of, of, of uh, real, real, real constructions. And then I remember that my, 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 uh, my friends, citizens of Belgrade, are rather shocked buying uh, old flat in, in Italy or in Greece or in Spain than properties in Belgrade because they are cheaper, the old, the old apartments, of course, uh, they are cheaper and they maybe have more trust in there than in Belgrade. So I, I have really doubt that, that this is a sustainable system. I have no idea what's going to happen. And I suppose that one day it's going to collapse and someone is going to lose the money. But it is very old fashioned type of thinking like, Let's construct, let's buy the land and that's double the, the value and then construct and then triple the value, 10 times uh, higher value, etc. It's, it's not sustainable. It's not, it's not really. It seems it is the only answer to how to get money. So something like that. So help us God. Well, if, if someone believes in God. So it's... Uh, I'm so I'm so sorry to be like dark at the end of the discussion, but I'm really frightened about what's going to happen. So, what is Well, I think you said you listed three possibilities. I'm using all three. I'm joining academia, writing papers. I'm doing uh, consulting work with, with smaller cities which are not so uh, eager to earn money from developers. And uh, three, I'm trying to be very active in associations. Uh, we aim to provide education, like continuous education to colleagues because these projects are not made by, by historians. These, car, these projects are made by the architects, planners, urban designers, investors. So we are all in it. So we are just trying, I think, the, 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 let's say, what I can contribute as an experienced planner to provide as much possible education to, to our, our professional society. Nothing else. What else? Or to join the politics, which I would never do. So uh, it's like. I think that the most powerful tool is education in terms of everything. So we have to trust in. Okay, is there, is there any Well, thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for the lecture. And well, uh, keep going with Urbanisma Comparat <laughs> and keep going with the vision optimistic of life, please. Yes. <laughs> and have a good night. Thank you so much. <laughs>